Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Bacon. Today, I got my partner here with me, Michael. He's going to be co-hosting with me. And we're going to be ask, answering some questions from some students in Utah. Well, one student in particular in Utah. We're going to be asking some questions that he uh, wrote us, uh, both of us, uh, a letter and uh, asking some things. This is a program that we uh, participate in. It's a pen pal program that they got going on out there where these college students, they'll ask these questions about us. We do this, what has it been, once or twice a year? We do yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah, we do it once or twice a year. We sit down and ask these questions. I hope that um, those of you listening uh, get something from this. The questions, I, I think, are excellent. And, uh, Michael, you want to say anything before we jump right into it? Let's just say hello to all the students and uh, appreciate you uh, taking the time out and wanting to know something. And, we hope that you, you you get something out of this. Absolutely, absolutely right, absolutely right. Let me look at this letter, and uh, we're gonna deal with the letter that he wrote you first, okay? And the question that he has is number one. He says, many prisons have an industrial entity that allows inmates to learn new trades, produce a quality product, and or earn money. There was a time that this was an unpaid punishment that had to be done in silence. In your experience, do you find the industry employment to be a great opportunity or do you find there to be issues with it? What do you think about that, Michael? Well, first of all, this, this, this institution doesn't have that, but there are several institutions across the state that have it. And it's a good thing now because you're getting you're getting a decent amount of money, and they set up a bank account for you that you can't touch until you get out, and then you have the money that they put on your account. So it's it's a good opportunity for people to learn new skills and to have some money saved up for when they get out. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's a great great opportunity for those that are allowed to participate in it. You know, my problem with it, if anything, I think, you know, I agree with all the things that you said, but my problem with it, if anything, is that it's so limited. Uh, the people that are allowed to participate in this particular program that they have at these other institutions, uh, they used to have it at this institution, but they stopped it, but they, they got them now at other institutions. But the problem that I have with it is that the people that are allowed to participate in it, they are closer to going home. Right? Mm -hmm. People, you, you have to have what? Two or three years or so before you can go home? Some of them. But you know, like the wood like the wood plant at, at Blesso, mm -hmm. uh, people had life sentences in there. Yeah, that's true too. That's true too. Those type of, okay, that industry, you, that's, I was in, I was looking at the industry that allows those individuals to go to the streets and work, leave prison and go out and work. But I yeah, guess you would yeah. include those in it as well. I just think that the opportunity to work should be available to most of the population with with some restrictions you know what I'm saying uh, you don't want a, somebody that's exhibiting sociopathic behaviors to be allowed to participate mm -hmm. in a program like that or somebody that's not obeying the rules of the prison to be able to participate in something like that but I think that the institutions are missing an opportunity to really change the culture inside of prison by limiting uh, the number of people that can participate in these programs. Now, I understand that you only have a certain amount of jobs available, especially like, like what you said, like the wood plant that's at certain facilities and that is on the compound. You know, they only have a certain amount of jobs available. Uh, I just think it needs to be expanded upon. I think that everybody in prison should be allowed that opportunity because it will undermine, in my opinion, it will undermine the criminal activity that goes on in here. You know, most people in here are involved in criminal activities making money uh, for different reasons, but most of them send that money home, help take care of their kids. Now, there are those that use that money to go buy drugs and do all those types of things, right? But if 
everybody were allowed to make money legally, you have an opportunity to get people on that track as opposed to, you know, people turning the other way. You know what I'm saying? What do you think about that? It is, and it creates a, a work ethic for people, you know, because they'll, they'll learn some work ethic. Because a lot of people didn't have that work ethic on the street and uh, being able to save money and being able to budget and things like that. They can learn that new skill, too. Right. Uh, along with the physical skills, you know, they can learn how to do the budget. Right. And to be yeah. able to take care of themselves right. when they get out of here. Yeah. And, and, and with, the, with the legal aspect of, of working those types of jobs, you know, you're paying room and board. Yeah. You, like you said, you start to learn how to be responsible. You start to appreciate the value of money. And, and, and then they help you save a portion of that. So when the time comes when you do get out, you're not walking out the door broke. You and know when, what I'm saying? And when you're paying into the pot, you're paying into the, uh, what is it, the victim's compensation fund. Victim's compensation fund. fund. It, it goes to them too. Yeah. So that, yeah. that could be more money for that. Right. If they if they expanded the program. Absolutely. Plus, you know what I'm saying, having a legitimate job, you're paying into the pot where, you know, one day when you get out, you know, you paid in Social Security, you'll be able to get Social Security. You see sure. what I'm saying? When you hit retirement age. All of those types of benefits, you know what I'm saying, are, 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 are limited to, available to only a small amount of people yeah. inside of prison. You know what I'm saying? And that, in my opinion, is one of the ways that, uh, one of the reasons that People in prison continue to participate in criminal activities. I understand what people say about people shouldn't be doing the things that they're doing in here, but one thing I would hope that people would remember, and you may not agree with it, but when you come into this environment, you have to survive it. And people find the best way they can to survive it. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And they and a lot of them, a lot of us in here have done criminal things to survive the environment. It's not right, it's not helpful, and it, it doesn't benefit anybody. But if you don't have another option, then it is what it is. It is. Because you work the jobs that the prison provides for you, you're only going to make 50 cents an hour, maybe a dollar an hour. You know what I mean? You're not paying. It, it's, it's not really helping the individual. It's helping the institution, but it's not helping the individual because you don't have those real life experiences that you can attach to earning that check. I mean, yeah. like paying room and board and yeah. paying for your meals and stuff like that. Okay? Now, let's get to question number two. Uh, that he sent you. He said, with the invention and advancement of technology, what would most inmates say surrounding the limited introduction and use of technology within your facility? Hmm. That's a good one. We don't have much technology around here. And you know, the new commissioner said that we're 30 years behind in the, te right. in the technological right. part. So, uh, you would need I think, say like for those of us that are getting getting ready to get out or mm -hmm. close to getting out mm -hmm. and have been gone for a long time like we have, uh, it's going to take a while to get caught up right. on a smartphone and get, right. get some of the little things, you know, that, right. that, that are out there, you know, because uh, think about the phone that they had when we were out. They were... The big yeah, block. Come on. When I left, they were still with the rotary dial. So, you <laughs> so know, they, they had just started with the cell phone at that time, yeah. but they still had rotary phone. And text messages and all that. No, no, that's yeah, they got invented so. in 1994. <laughs> I was already in here by then, five years. You know? yeah, so. But 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 I think that the limited introduction of technology, it, it, it's handicapping. It's crippling to people in prison, period, point blank. I think that under you know some restrictions, I think that People in prison should be allowed to stay connected in that way. For one of the reasons, like what you said, when people are about to get out, they won't be so far behind yeah. in, in, in understanding the technology and, and being able to utilize it in a positive way. See, prison, people, the people that run prisons have this idea of create these rules that are going to give us an absolute protection against A, B, or C, right? And, and I think that's so sad because, you know, no, no rule that you write is going to stop any and everybody from doing what they want to do, right? That's why you have regulations and things like that in play. But using that as a justification to not allow technologies that would help further our reform, it's a sad commentary on the people that actually run these places, you know? We should be allowed to have cell phones. We should be allowed to 
uh, use the internet under supervision. You understand what I'm saying? There should be a way that they can do that that will allow people to utilize that type of technology in a positive way. You know, I think you could better regulate it in this environment because the environments are smaller. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And, and, and all of those types of things. But I think that the, the limited introduction of technology cripples people in prison when it comes to their reform. I, I, I just, you know, the evidence is clear, you know, and uh, we, we don't even halfway. And if you live in a totally following all the rules life in prison, uh, you're not going to understand anything. I know this one guy that's locked up that has never, he, he doesn't know anything about the internet. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. He's heard of emails, but he don't really know what that means. He don't really understand that. He don't understand that at all. And, you know, I've had my times when I, since I've been in prison that I've messed around. I've had cell phones and stuff like that, right? So I have some understanding of that. But this individual that I'm talking about, he has no clue. He's been so terrified of, of doing anything and breaking the rules, he's never touched a cell phone or anything. Yeah. Wouldn't even know how to turn it on. <laughs> Think about that. Because that, that goes to the question, is the Department of Corrections about reformation or punishment? Because if you were about reformation, then you'd have more things for us. Right. Because I'll give you the prime example that I've, I've said before. I went to go take a class in 2008, the HVAC class. Right. They told me I had too much time to take the class. But then they stick me in CMS, which is Career Management for Success. Mm. What career am I managing from in here with all the time <laughs> that I have? Right. And I can't use that. What I right. can use this HVAC thing right. while I was while, you know, in prison. Right. But, right. So they didn't let me do it. I did it on my own. So. And that's another thing, too, right? You know, we, you know, we got a lot of governors now talking about, you know, uh, these uh, technical schools and, and, and having all of these programs like HVAC and stuff like that in prisons, right? And my thing with that is I think that's a great thing. And they should allow more of that. But once the individual that they allow in the class completes the class and has certification, they should be taking those individuals and, and matching them with employers out there on the street. And I'm talking about even if you still have a significant amount of time left to do. We have to get away from this idea that the more time you have, the more likely you are to be the one to run off. We got to get away from it because it's not true. The facts don't support it. At all. Because the whole time when, when under the old commissioner, when the guys walked off from the annex, those are the, those are the people that came in with eight Small and six sentences. year sentences. And you had people with life sentences over there that never walked no, off. No, they've never had one case in Tennessee where a person with a life sentence no. walked off from a work detail. No. Not and one. they were out working. Yeah. They, they're enjoying that. Yeah. They were out working. They were enjoying it. They felt a sense of self-worth. You know what I'm saying? And they didn't want to mess that up. You know what <laughs> I mean? They didn't want to mess that up. Now, let me get to the questions that he wrote me. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let me find it on this paper. Okay, question one. Prisons have a culture all their own. And unless a person has been incarcerated, they will not understand that. On any given day that you or others wake up, what would you say is a fear? that most inmates feel from the culture and lifestyle within the prison? That's a great question, too, man. That's a great question. It's such a great question. I'm like, you're going to have to go first on this Okay, one. <laughs> I'll go first. I'll go first. The obvious answer to that would be that something's going to pop off in the prison and I'm going to get hurt or somebody that I mess with is going to get hurt or I'm going to have to do something to somebody else. But... When I was reading the question earlier and I was thinking about it, uh, one of the, above that, above getting hurt or somebody that I mess with getting hurt, above that, what I fear the most every freaking day that I get up is that somebody that works in this facility or any facility that I've been in is going to go out of their way to remind me that they see me as a slave. Now, what do I mean by that? You can get lost in here mentally when you're working a particular job and you start to feel in your mind that you're actually doing something worthwhile and you have a say and they listen to what you say and you have a voice, right? And somebody that works in the facility, they'll hear you voicing your opinion about 
something that they believe you're crossing a line, not because you're wrong about what you're saying, but because you're an inmate. And they will go out of their way to put you back in your place because you spoke out. And that terrifies me. Every time that that happens to me, it makes me feel like I'm like the size of an ant. You feel like I don't matter. And it takes a while for me to recover from that, you know? And that is what I fear on a daily basis. What about you? And then it speaks to that. I had that incident because uh, I had wrote a grievance. Mm-hmm. And we you know we discussed. Explain what a grievance is. Uh, it's something that is, of course, it, the word to grieve, you know, you're grieving something that was done wrong to you or that you felt you were wronged or this is the only process that you have to go through. So going through that process, uh, I wrote this grievance. We had a hearing. Of course, they didn't really address the problem. And uh, the officer was like, well, why did you appeal it? You're getting, you're getting what you want. I said, how do you figure that? Well, they're trying out the thing that, you, that you're that uh, you asking for. Mm-hmm. I said, just because they're trying it doesn't mean they're going to get it. Right. And how, right. Come, how come the people downtown shouldn't know about this? Right. Why you wouldn't know? you want, not want them to know? Yeah, so why, right. why, why would I not want to keep pushing it? Right. Well, I don't see, I don't see the problem with it. It, it. You're getting it. You're going to get it. Uh, maybe, maybe it's the new company that's got it. I said, look, it's the same technology that, that you can just apply it to what we have. Mm-hmm. You, you don't have to go around another contract. Right. Miss me with all that, right? But 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 you're you're telling me that my concerns and things don't amount don't to matter. anything because you're lower than any you know you're lower than a human being right. because you should just accept this because you committed a crime. Whatever what it was in my opinion in that situation is that they didn't want that idea or that revelation of getting some better technology that would allow y'all to do a better job at what you do to come from you. And it would come from you with that grievance once it lands on the commissioner's desk. They say, okay, we're going to give you what you want. And then they're going to make that recommendation to the commissioner. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And that way it excludes you from being the inmate, from being recognized in that way, right? And I don't think a lot of people understand how how pervasive that is in here. They don't, a lot of the people that work these facilities don't want, Anything that we say or, or any idea that we have to reach the ears of the right people because they feel like that we will be given some kind of credit for that. And they don't want us to get credit for that. They want us to believe that we are worthless. And that's a hard battle every day trying to deal with that. You know what I'm saying? Telling yourself, getting up in the morning, looking in the mirror and telling yourself that you matter every day when you're going to be out on the population, in general population, around people that work here and that live here, for that matter, that have bought into that worthlessness that are going to remind you whenever they get the opportunity that you are worthless. Yeah. And you got to push back against that. Yeah, you do. You got to push back. And they're always telling me, you always have something to say. You always this or that. Look. An old man told me a long time ago, if you don't stand up for what's right, you're going to fall for anything. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Now let me read this second question that he had. When I explained to others what this course would be like, they were surprised when I shared that you would communicate with me via a podcast. During your prison experience, what are some of the best changes or improvements made for those serving time? (laughs) Another good question. Well... This is going to sound tricky, weird. Um, I don't know if much has changed, man. Um, It wasn't that the prison changed that allowed me to do what I'm doing. You understand? Uh, I came up with this idea on my own. And and I found a way to execute it. Uh, But... I will say that I do like the programs that they have that allow us to work. I just think they need to expand it. I think they need to expand it. It's one of the greatest things that they have. And they won't allow people to participate in it that have large sentences or violent charges. They just won't. They base you becoming a trustee or a um, somebody that can work in one of those jobs they base that on your institutional record, uh, which they should, and the length of your sentence. 
which they should. Except in some situations, like you said, at the wood plants and other places, yeah. they allow people that have licenses to work. You know what I mean? Um, so there are exceptions to all of it. But I just think that the door should be open. If you have a good institutional record, and you, let's say, if served, if you have a 50-year sentence, if you served 10 years of that, no write-ups within the last five years of that 10 years, and you're showing that you want to change your life, they should allow you to work. And if you want to start a business, if you want to start a business, they should facilitate that. They should help you and facilitate that. It's just that, you know, prison is about separating us from society and making sure that we don't hurt the officers or ourselves and serve our sentence. And that's it. I don't see, like I say, they, they got the work programs and they got programs where you can go to talk to somebody about drug use and alcohol use. They're trying to bring that back. But other than that, I just don't see, I don't see those changes that I hear some of the politicians talk about. Yeah, I have to say in the 28 years that I've done, I, I don't I don't see anything that's really changed for the better. You know, of course I can say that bringing back the work release helps, mm -hmm. but you have to be within three years of flattening right. or finishing your sentence. Right. Right. I mean, what if something happens before those three years come and I'm blessed to be able to re be released early? Really? So here I am, eight years left to do on my sentence and they release me early, just for, for, for example. And... I don't have any money saved up because I've only been making 50 cents, 34 exactly. cents an hour. You don't have enough. And I've only been able to, 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 to struggle to get things done. Right. So that opportunity for me, if I was that person, would, would not be there because I'm not within that three years. Now, I get that you, 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 you want to protect society and make sure that somebody doesn't run off or doesn't do this, doesn't do that. That's why it comes to a better vetting process when it comes to the people that have to that right. they're going out there to work. A man with a fresh life sentence, if you if you know that man, he's been locked up 10, 12 years, whatever, and he's displayed you know good character that made a wrong choice right. at, at one point in his life, you, you need, to, need to look at that. Yeah, ease him out. Don't just throw him out there to work. Ease him out. You know what I'm saying? In phases to the point to where, okay, he gets it, he's comfortable, he can work out here. And, and in an environment where you can kind of control his movements, but give them the opportunity... One of the things before I end this show, right, is that I want to say, prison shouldn't be just about separating us from society. It should not be just about that. It has. I would hope that one day somebody would come up with the, 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 the guts to say that we need to be using prison as a way to undermine the criminal ideology. You put people in prison, right? And you give just a small percentage the opportunities to do better, right? That allows for the gangs and all the other criminal-minded people that have bought into that lifestyle, that really believe in that lifestyle. They have that other 95% of people to choose from, to keep wrapped up in that nonsense. And that is a sad thing because we should be using that time that people are being incarcerated to convince them that there, there's a better way. There's a better way. And when you have total control over my body, you got total control over my movements, you should be able to come up with some programs that undermine all of those people that don't want that type of change, the gangs and all of that. You should be able to undermine them by offering opportunities to those individuals that want it. And they shouldn't be excluded because they have large sentences or violent charges. They shouldn't be. But that's my... That's my closing statement. If we were in court, that would be my closing argument. You know what I'm saying? You got anything you want to say, Mike? No, just to, just to chat. You know, if you, um, when you write your next question, just, uh, just put it in one letter. You know, we're, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. In, we're in this together. So, yeah, absolutely. So save a stamp and just, yeah. just sit in one letter. Yeah, that, that'll work. I want to thank you, Chad, for the questions, man. And uh, everybody out there that's listening, I hope that y'all learned something from it and appreciate, you know what I'm saying, uh, y'all sending out taking the time and uh, including us in this program, right? This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all.